And we're live on the Stables Network. Hey guys, welcome to the Scotty Sports Show edition. I don't even know anymore. It's been chaotic, obviously, with all the corona going on. I'm joined by a couple special guests tonight. Obviously, my co-host, Jeff Bryce. Hanging out live in the uh, spare bedroom, I'm sure. And then uh, our special guest tonight is an offensive lineman who is a former defensive lineman, which we'll get to in a little bit here. Actually, a pretty studly defensive lineman from what I've read about. Um, Tyler Mars, a new member of the Carolina Panthers. So thank you for joining us, Tyler. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Man, you must be sick and tired of staring at computer sp- screens, considering that's all you guys get to do right now, isn't it? <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been crazy. I mean, you know, fortunately we can at least do that. Um, this is kind of my first year and there's a new, new staff with the Panthers. So, I mean, at least we've been able to kind of start learning the playbook and, and know what the coaches are going to want and what, what they're going to expect from us. Have you so, been like contact with uh, Matt rule at all? Um, not, you know, personally, but um, obviously with the meetings, we're able to, you know, see them and, he sent out, you know, a little video kind of introducing himself and what he's all about. And, you know, and that's the big thing, you know, he, he's been able to, you know, reach out to all of us via the Microsoft teams and um, just put into our minds what he's going to expect. Cause I mean, people don't like to say it's a rebuilding year, but you're, you're yeah. kind of starting from the ground up and, you know, putting their, their spin on things. So. How's, how's communication been other than that, like with guys on your own team, your position coaches? This is unprecedented time, so none of us know what the heck you guys are dealing with. So walk us through a typical typical day right now, you know, compared to what it would normally be. Um, the good thing with the iPads now is they have a app on there called Teamworks. And so, you know, whether it's the coaching assistant or whoever it may be, they can push like messages out to us and have a schedule set. So we know what time we've got our meetings. Um, But if there's anything important that like we need to know as a position group, we've got an O-line group chat going, uh, which we, you know, take advantage of. It'd be crazy to see how players communicated back in like the 80s before they had cell phones. Because, you know, even like when we were at the facility, if someone was running late or wasn't in the building yet, we'd get on our phone and call them right away and be like, hey, are you okay? Like, do you get in an accident or what? And you know, so, but yeah, it's, it's easy to contact each other and, and keep in touch. Nice. Yes. So what's been the biggest adjustment going from Nashville over to uh, Carolina? What's, what's the biggest thing you've noticed so far? Um, I mean, the, the climate is very similar. It's basically just straight East of, of Nashville. Um, you know, from the little bit of time I spent there, the people are great. Uh, there's, there's a good scene there with, you know, bars and food and, um all the important things to us midwestern exactly yeah yeah i mean when you play ball at wisconsin for five years you you realize that <laughs> right. um but no it's it seems like a great town the the cool thing about it is it's kind of nascar central so when i get back there this this off season i was planning on kind of you know touring some of that stuff and and checking it out but obviously with this all happening that might not happen but uh yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting back there. Nice. So what have you been doing to keep yourself busy? You said you're out in Springfield, Minnesota. For the average Joe Blow who has no idea, tell us where it's at. Uh, so it's in southwest Minnesota. I always tell people it's an hour west of Mankato, Minnesota. Uh, Mankato is where the Vikings um, had training camp for, gosh, I don't know how many years, but as a kid, it was always fun to go. You know, it's only an hour away, and Versus the Twin Cities is like two and a half hours. So I never really got to any NFL games, but going to see them during training camp was always a highlight. Um, but yeah, it's a small farming community, about population, 2,000 people. So I'm able to get out, go for bike rides, go for walks. Um, been kind of doing some construction type stuff, building. And, um, you know, we heat, heat our house with uh, firewood. So constantly splitting wood if I get the chance to. And, you know, just trying to enjoy the weather because I was here this winter and it wasn't very nice. So um, once the fishing opener hits, I'll probably try and get out on the lake a little bit and do some fishing. What was a fishing opening down there or up there? <laughs> I, I, I think it's um, like around May 15th usually. Oh, okay. I know 
at the lake that um, we go to, the supposedly the crappies are doing pretty well right now. So just got to get up there and because there's no season on them, I believe. Them and panfish. Is it true that uh, everybody kind of that dislikes the perch up there? Is it kind of like a bottom uh, feed? No, I, I, I'll eat perch, man. I'll, I eat I'll eat, too. <laughs> I, I eat, I ate bullheads when I was a kid. So yeah, oh. I don't. <laughs> what you're saying is you want a lot of team challenges if I dare you to eat this is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'll eat anything. I have a, uh, my uncle's aunt, uh, she makes this bullhead soup and supposedly it's really good. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah. I went, um, I went bow fishing a couple weeks ago and we shot some dogfish, some carp, and uh, oh. one guy got a, a bullhead. But yes, I posted a picture on Instagram and someone's like, please do not be eating them. And I'm like, smoke <laughs> carp ain't bad if you if you make it right. But Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're definitely bot- bottom feeders, so it's not like you yeah. want to just fillet them and right. fry them on the stove. But if you smoke them right, I think it's pretty good with like crackers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Out here for some uh, smoked walleye sometime, you'd be all set to go with that one. There, there you go. Me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just teasing each other. We're only 20 minutes away from each other and we haven't been able to see each other in about a month, <laughs> two months now. And it's just so weird because we're watching each other's kids grow up. And it sounds funny saying it that way, but we're 20 minutes away, man. You're stuck with, uh, you know, watching people grow up over the internet now or watching all these monumental things happen. You know, Jeff's daughter's only nine months old and seeing all the progression with her. It's like, no, she's too cute. We want to squeeze yeah. her. And yeah. All hair. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got, I have two older brothers and luckily the one is in the same town that I'm in right now and he's got two kids, but the other one lives up by uh, Moorhead, Minnesota, which is right by Fargo. And uh, he's got a little boy. That's like, uh, he's not quite two. I think he turns two in September, but he's at that age where like he's starting to talk and he's just got so much personality. And yeah, it's like, we try to FaceTime as much as we can, but I mean, it's not the same as being a person. Yeah, right. my parents try FaceTiming us all the time, and it's it's not the same. They miss them, and my wife's parents miss them too, and it, it sucks right now. Yeah, for sure. So any exciting plans for Mother's Day weekend, Tyler? Uh, no, I haven't even got my mom anything yet. I, oh. I'm not a good son. But Hopefully you're not watching. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Rely on them. <laughs> well... I don't know. We'll probably like grill something and yeah. hope I, I think it's supposed to be kind of chilly this weekend up here. So Same. Uh, like we'll be able to be outside, but I don't know, just we'll find something to do. Talking potential snow flurries out here by us this weekend. It's like, come on, dude, really? We're in May. Oh, geez. I thankfully have to work then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be uh, shooting a show. I think we're going to bump up Sundays to Saturday this week. Obviously this one being live, which is kind of fun, but um definitely gonna have some interesting fun i was gonna do a home inspection They're like you know sunday is mother's day i'm like no the following one i heard you guys get another one this month he's like oh yeah that works just <laughs> like, to me. so um tyler speaking of i, I promised you we were talking off air we were gonna go back to the throwback so let's start off when did you start first picking up or destroying someone playing football when was your your start in the game um like I just said earlier, I have two older brothers, so, uh, and we're all four years apart. So, um, I mean, gosh, as soon as I can remember, I was playing sports, whether it was basketball, baseball, or football. Um, and I was always trying to keep up with those two. So, sure. you know, they were always pushing me. Um, but in, in my hometown, we weren't able to really start organized football until I think fifth and sixth grade was flag football. And then sure. seventh and eighth was Same. junior high. I mean, you got some towns that are playing like what is it, the little tykes or whatever when they're yeah, oh, I know it's crazy. That's like little... five years old. <laughs> no <laughs> wonder why we got concussion issues. Yeah, oh crap. <laughs> Terrible that keyword around here, man. That thing's dangerous. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, what, yeah, so... you guys have been scared away from the game. I mean, people don't realize that when you're an NFL player, having picked up some of the guys' mail before, I mean, you guys get 50 to 100 letters a month from all these people going, you're nuts for playing football. Here's all the damage that can happen. It's like, it's like anything else. You know, look at people that do demo derbies. Are you sitting there reading them freaking letters? 
Farmer John up the road? Like, no. So shut up. Let us play our game and get paid, you know? Yeah. Just well, at this game. level, I mean, we know, like, what we're getting into. When you're a little kid, you don't – I mean, right. you don't really know what the long-term effects could be. But I guess it's either, hey, you do this or you get home and help mom wash dishes all day. Well, I'll go <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It, they'll push their They're, button and have them do their dishes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many good life lessons you can learn in playing sports in general too. So yeah, I, know I, I was, I always get the question that people ask, like if I have a boy or kids, or whatever, will I let them play, you know, contact sports? And it's like, I mean, if they want to, yeah, it's, right. I'm not going to keep them out of playing football just because of it's that. Yeah. It's crossed my mind a little bit with that. I mean, maybe at a certain age, I might not let them play Till just because the concussion can thing kind of scares me a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I played when I was in fifth grade. I think we, Mike and I, started at the same football place, same Pats, you know, in Green Bay, and <laughs> it was pretty yeah. neat to, hey, Jeff, to play that. Song. Is that lotion on you right there? Because you're getting a little soft on me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Get more playing women's soccer than you do in NFL football, so it'll be. Up I know. Your- I know. We're talking to a lineman here. He doesn't know how to spell Kentucky. <laughs> I was not sure they taught you that right away. That's fine. Oh, yeah. So, Tyler, your background from um, for college was what? what? What was your degree in then? Uh, so I had an undergrad in um, life science communications with a certificate in entrepreneurship. And then I actually got a master's in educational leadership and policy analysis. So took full advantage of my time there. Um, yeah, I was a great place to be for, for an education. And, you know, we had great help with tutors and advisors and yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys have been to Camp Randall lately, but right. I think it was, was it like my sophomore, junior year, they redid the, yeah. um, like the education center on the, on Camp Randall. So, I mean, we had brand new facilities. It was, state-of-the-art stuff and um yeah I mean it was it, it made it easy to be successful in the classroom as well as on the field so for yeah. those who don't know what is life sciences like what kind of stuff do you study in there um I mean it was kind of like a communications degree um but I don't know, I, I took a lot of classes I mean I took weather and climate classes I took marketing classes um speech classes a radio class like it just hit a lot of things. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, and obviously I still don't. I'm <laughs> going to play ball as long as I can, but oh, it was definitely – a yeah, it was, it was good to just kind of touch on all those things. Nice. So, obviously, the smart guy in the group, then whenever it came to uh, betting players on different things, or if I ever go on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, I now, uh, Tyler, hope I can call on you. Yeah, I'll be your phone a friend. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't even know if they let you do it now. Everything's so technology based. You might not even be able to call anybody. It's like, hey, we're gonna video chat Tom down the road here, or whatever. So yeah, that just that just started back up. I think with uh, Jimmy Kimmel. It's been <laughs> I saw that. Up every uh, week. So Tyler, walk me through. Speaking of your college experience, I mean the team. You guys did well while you were there, man. Yeah, um, I was there from eleven to fifteen, and. I mean, we had some successful years, you know, obviously the first two years we went to Rose Bowls and then um, the last three we didn't, which, you know, the first two years I didn't contribute as much, but it definitely kind of set the standard of like, hey, this is what we do. You know, we play in good bowl games and, you know, to not get to back to a Rose Bowl kind of sucked. But, um, you know, we kind of started the trend of winning bowl games because for a while there we weren't winning any and. I think it was my junior year when Alvarez coached us. We won the uh, Outback Bowl and then senior year won uh, uh, the Holiday Bowl. And I think ever since then, we've been uh, winning winning bowl games. So, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where you look to the leaders in the room when you get there. And when you become that guy, you just try and kind of pass that torch on. And kind so of nice. It's been cool. To... What's that? Yeah, it's kind of nice to actually own, like, the University of Miami – like Wisconsin just owns them. Like, yeah, in, you know, it's cool. Exactly. And now a lot of those guys that I, you know, cause my senior year, I think 
we had like four redshirt freshmen starting on the O-line with me toward the end of the year. Um, and, you know, the, a lot of those guys are in the league now. And so I'll come across them when we play each other, or whatever it is. And it's just cool to see them guys that are, you know, they're growing up now. They're not little 18 year old kids. So um, <laughs> mentality might still be there of an 18 year old. Depends on which one you talk to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, and I haven't really got a chance to get back to Madison, which is kind of a bummer, but. I was just yeah, about, yeah, yeah, the locker room, you would never recognize anymore. I mean, the, the um, new facilities that they put in there is just amazing. Yeah. I actually, I was back one time because I saw that they had put in like a, Jack Links, um, the Jack Links, <laughs> yeah. And one of the trainers was telling me about it. And I was like, "Man, this is crazy! They can like order a smoothie and get all the yeah. beef jerky they want. It's it's amazing." Like a pro pro facility or what? <laughs> yeah, the whole camp well, set up that way. Once you're a ball player, like you guys have, I don't remember what all places we went to, but there are like stations just for the athletes to like fuel up all day long. Like you guys do not go hungry. You guys do not have to worry about getting enough to eat, like send the poor hungry people to UW Madison. You'll be fine. Like, yeah. Amazing. With this. Yeah. One of the coaches, I don't remember which position group. I think it was your guys running backs coach. Here you go. Coach Lovelace, take all this with you. And gave me like a care package. It was like you said, like 40 bucks of beef jerky alone. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> like, yeah, they're going crazy, picking up everything, whooping ass on the uh, ping pong tables. It was a good time. Now they got pool tables in the sleep chambers. So it's really yep. cool going on. I know a lot of a lot of fans don't really know this, but um, you know you'd kind of expect like an NFL facility to be the best of the best, but it's not always that way because um, you know at college you got to recruit kids to come there, so you kind of want the wow factor with that. Where in the pro level, I mean, you're paying guys, so you know sometimes these owners don't always stick money into the facility to keep it updated. Um, luckily, when I was with Tennessee, they were kind of just doing some of them updates. And now I know the Panthers, I think they're going to be getting a new facility in like 2022. Yeah. Yeah. But, they some of the spec stuff on it. it's amazing. Some of the, some of the things, I mean, obviously we're spoiled here in green Bay. They finally got some updates and the fan experience is really what green Bay is all about being a, a family owned team or a community owned team. A lot different. Like you said, you won't get the wow factor. You won't get the, Hey guys, here's a, a Rolex for you. And here's this and that, like, hilarious seeing what the guys at Madison get my God going through the locker room. They go here. You want this? You want this? You want this? We don't care. We get it for free. You get to the yeah. level and the guy's like, man, I don't even know if I can give you a pair of gloves, bro. I'm tied up on it. I was like, it's gloves. Like you got 800 pairs. No, nah, dude, I got for the year. I'm a practice squatter. It's like, it's all good. Bro. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> like people think the NFL life is just there. And it's crazy when you do the breakdowns, obviously you've taken a lot of business class being the entrepreneur side people don't really realize how much money really goes right back out there. I mean, you guys are getting 20, 30% at most. I mean, that's why you look at guys like a Marshawn Lynch that goes, I'm not sending my NFL check anytime soon. I'll live off the interest and I'm good to go. So hey, smart. Amazing to tell that when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and that's a, you know, with teams and locker rooms, you know, like the O-line usually hangs out a lot together and to kind of surround yourself with someone that's, living that way i mean you got some guys that'll just blow through their money and they got 10 cars or something like that and then you got the other guy that's investing all his money and you know living pretty tight it's like i'm gonna be around that guy and pick his brain <laughs> all right yeah. well and being from a small town obviously it's probably made you a little bit more frugal than the guys oh, that yeah. people that jump yeah i don't need much to live i can man i'd rather be outside the majority of the day anyway well, and you, like you said earlier, I mean, you hunt, you fish, you do all that different stuff. I mean, yeah, you can provide if you have to in a nutshell. I mean, most guys that would think NFL player always oh, got this, he's got that. And you're telling me you're cutting your own firewood like that's just, For the average person, they're not going to understand what that means. They're like, why the hell would you hire someone? Well, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. it's called life. And then you get boredom. I mean, look at all of us right now with nothing else better to do. We're all learning hobbies we never thought we'd have anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not not a bad thing. No. what's some new Tyler that you've learned or picked up as a hobby since uh everything started here um gosh I don't know I guess not there isn't too much because all my other hobbies have kept me busy but 
I mean, I don't know. I guess if I wanted to, I could probably learn how to like sew something. My mom's pretty good at all that stuff, which isn't very manly, but I mean, if you get in a bind, it's not a bad little hobby to, to know, but. Hey, but, yeah. a pair of pants, it comes in handy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Fine. You don't know, it's good for that. So yeah. Play down there. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, especially with, you know, going from winter to spring or summer here, we had to, you finally can put the snowblower away, which is a great feeling up here in the Midwest. And yeah, you know, winter, get out winter. The, <laughs> yeah, get out the pre winter mower. I, mean, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but we've had some rain here, so we've been gonna have to start mowing here every week, I suppose. But yeah, they've been flooding again throughout, so we were just up in uh, the New London area up here, and yeah, they had a ton of water above flood crest and all that, and it's been crazy, but. It is what it is. You kind of expect it, like you said. So luckily we didn't yeah. get big, big over-expected, overblown forecast for snow. I mean, they were saying it was going to be the worst winter ever and it was going to be snow every day. I mean, honestly, Jeff, I don't know about you, but I don't think it was that bad here in Wisconsin this year compared to others. No, I think it was terrible. I mean, we didn't get snow till what, Christmas? Yeah. yeah, it wasn't bad. Even when it did, I maybe used my snowblower three, four times. I got that. I moved Half to Ohio, so I didn't have to. <laughs> At the time, it was just me being lazy and not wanting to shovel. <laughs> that worked. Yeah, I know. Compared to last year, it's definitely been a better year. Right. Yeah. So, Tyler. Have, oh, go ahead, Jeff. I have a mother in law lives up in Rhinelander in Wisconsin, and they, I mean, they're getting 12 inches of snow at a pop, and it, they're just not loving it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. They have like a country festival there, don't they? Oh, yeah. Uh, in the summer? I, egg. Right. I, yeah. 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 Bring your own. Yeah, because <laughs> – well, I know there was a guy, um, Aaron Watson, he was playing there, like, I think maybe last year, and I wanted to go go to it. And I Googled where that was. It was, like, in the middle of nowhere. Um, oh, I'll tell you that. But it was just – it just made me think, you know, with all this going on, like, Wisconsin, Minnesota, we've got so many music festivals. And, like, I've been um, to the Dells. Oh, the Dells th- – thrives off of summers and with this virus it's like yeah they're they're yeah that's not looking pretty there <laughs> yeah they're gonna be they're gonna be hurting tyler uh, around when the big flood happened when uh they lost lake delton well now this year again for the fir- first time again now or second time again now they are completely canceling all tommy bartlett shows this year already oh. today um that was something i posted up earlier i mean that's just crazy when you think about like you said a huge huge thing that's family owned that it's, guy's been yeah. dollar for years <laughs> uh, show sponsors can i mean they're still shut down right now and they're a restaurant trying to get by it's it's amazing to see yeah little towns like that that you know thrive on that even green bay if we don't get the training camp started they're saying that's two three hundred million dollars at least uh, definitely another big event how you're probably used to is ea the big flying in oshkosh that's canceled this year now 170 yeah. local impact i mean Jeez. just in um you know, what about Country USA? Is that do you know anything about that? Get back to uh, I think it's August right now, so we're looking at maybe going now. We're gonna probably end up being in Nashville, knock on wood that we can. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff at bay. There's a lot of people like even the Dell's kickoff books through one of the radio stations, those aren't happening this year. It's just, yeah, hey, even the radio stations are struggling to look for stuff to give out to people for contests and stuff like. Yep. It's just random stuff. Oh, when it opens up, you can use this or whatever. Yeah. I had the local paper here in Minnesota that would follow us and do articles on us. He was kind of, I don't know, starving for some articles. So he called me up the one day because he had done one on me like after the season when I'd signed the futures deal. And he's like, hey, can I, can I do another story on you? And I was like, yeah, of course. But there's been a couple kids in from my hometown that have gone and played college ball now and so it seemed like every other day it was like a Springfield kid with an article in there because he was trying to you know just get content out and I mean it's crazy times all you can watch man it's been crazy so yeah Yeah. Cornhole what was the other big thing ESPN just had wasn't it uh that horse horse racing yeah it was a virtual horse racing well no they had like the basketball players playing horse against each other oh yeah yeah. did you guys see that that uh, was kind of stupid but yeah, where are you? <laughs> like it doesn't that yeah. that Bulls documentary has been what I've been yeah looking forward to every week, which is cool. Yeah, it's been. Ca- I mean, you don't realize how bad it really was. I mean, you heard the stories of Jordan punching a guy, and 
doing some of the other stuff and having his gambling. But yeah, you don't realize half the stuff like the Dennis Rodman getting a, a two day paid vacation. And yeah, you know, even before the, the championship game, you know, coach Jackson just going, you know what, you guys all disappeared for a little bit. When most coaches are like, you guys need to practice. Like Jordan said himself, man, you would have told us that you'd had some pissed off dudes, man. <laughs> like it would Yeah. Not... Well, like for me, I mean, I'm a little younger than you guys. I know, but I don't really remember watching them play. I was just oh. too young. So it's, I, it it's was kind of nice to see it. <laughs> I'm not a Jordan fan by any means. I, I'm not a big star guy. I, Jordan, I, I don't like the cockiness kind of thing. Like I know everybody loved him, but I, I just never was a fan. I, yeah. I was a Carl I Malone, it, Reggie Miller. I know Reggie Miller is a little cocky too, but I like those guys. Yeah. I think it's interesting how he's got a stogie in his mouth every other yeah. clip <laughs> clip they show him. It's like, my goodness. Does yeah. this guy have any lungs or the scotch and all that? Yeah. I mean, hell. Yeah. Well, like he was saying, if you just watched the last episode, he goes, damn, when guys were sitting around the locker room, when I got started, he goes, guys would be bumming cigarettes off your coaches. Like, that's just. Yeah. I mean, I've coached arena ball, and it's crazy because we've had guys laying up cigars in the hallway, you know, during the middle of the game. Oh. It's like, holy oh. fuck, really? Is this <laughs> our guys? But you'd walk through the pot filled hallways and everything. I mean, it's just insane. You came um, in smoking bars. Like, <laughs> smoking yeah. <everywhere. laughs> I, I played for my first two years in the league was with um for Coach Malarkey and Russ Grimm was our O line coach and you know they were definitely the older generation and and when they played like they would tell us stories about you know coming in after practice and instead of the coolers being filled with Gatorade and water it was beer yeah or between practice and like meetings that night they would go dip out to the bar for a little while and come back to meetings you know Man, however many beers deep and it's <laughs> Sounds like a Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Oh, but it's just <laughs> it's just crazy to think, you know, how times have changed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nowadays, I mean, we laugh because I've coached high school football up to the pros, and it's hilarious when you have the peewee football parents, if you know what I'm referring to there, because I know it says you've ran a lot of camps. My kid was a stud in fifth grade. Really? Your kid was a stud. Who was he signed with? Nike, Adidas, Under Armour? Like who is yeah. he? that big like it's just amazing to see even now you can't correct a kid without worried about a parent jumping down your throat going hey you ruined my kid's life because you told him he needed to correct his form and he had his head down and he can put his head down if he wants yeah sue me so your kid has a separated neck like no this yeah doesn't happen so yeah us in <laughs> soccer generation i hate to pick on you tyler but hell like we were joking with Esra who played with Favre and all those guys and you just said it the things that those guys used to do, if social media existed, let's be honest, most of the league would be locked up. Um, yeah. After things wouldn't happen. I mean, you guys are so at a disadvantage now that everything has to be recorded. Everything has to be documented. Everything has to be, there's so much on that BS and political side. You don't just get to shut up and play ball anymore, which is sad. Um, yeah. Look at some of the guys now going, is he making it because of his true athletic ability? Is it because of who his agent is? Is it because of, you know, I mean, there's all that politics that you look like and go, I used to whoop him up and down the sideline. All of a sudden that guy's making it and I'm not. And it comes yeah. in. Why is that happening? Well, unfortunately, you know, as well as I do, there's a lot of politicking still involved in that game. Yeah. And I know like watching the, um, the MJ episode this last week or the Bulls documentary, um, he kind of touched on how like, he wasn't really able to be himself because everywhere he'd go, he was always getting bombarded. And I mean, I'm not at that level by any means, but like, you got to just be careful. You can't even retweet certain things or put a certain picture. I mean, like you can just, you're always second guessing yourself and you can't just really be yourself, which is annoying, but um, it is what it is. I'm definitely blessed in other areas and fortunate for what I'm doing. Well, look at the kids like when in, during a draft or whatever, a bad tweet from five, six years ago comes back and, and just kills his career. Like Michael Orr that one year, he had a video of him. I think he was smoking marijuana and it came that back. Ton he, Tunsil. Tunsil. That's what it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was Tunsil. I never, yeah. he, he kept slipping and slipping and slipping. And then finally the dolphins grabbed him at like nine. He was supposed to go like two overall. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be careful. Yeah. It makes you think back to like what you posted in high school on Facebook or MySpace and 
I was yeah. like, oh, hopefully it wasn't anything bad. Nice to look at the Facebook memories and you look back, it's like, what the heck was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of the Michael thing, man, what happened to that guy? Like, he just had the meltdown. I don't understand. You talk about philosophies and mental side and being able to handle the game. Obviously, we all saw the movie. Then he goes, well, I don't want to be recognized because the movie. Well, you knew what the heck you were getting into at that point. And then he beats the crap out of someone for doing it. Like, what yeah. do you think? Now, I get the stress of the NFL because I've grown around this sport my entire life. I mean, I've had neighbors of all skill level here. People don't understand the skill set and the, the mental capacity of what you players have to deal with. I mean, there's the testing you guys have to go through to even make it to the NFL. That's a big part of that now in the draft that never used to be. Before, it was like, how many fingers? Eh, close enough. You're in. Now it's like, hey, man, what was the broad side of a barn? Three ways from Sunday, twice removed, find X. You're like, huh? You know, it's just such a crazy, crazy world. And you look at, you know, it doesn't take much to get to players nowadays. Even safety for you guys is becoming a bigger, bigger issue at facilities now. It's just, you know, we had a guy crash into something at Lambeau Field here a year, year and a half ago. It was just insane. Uh, it was like cook that went nuts or something in there. Yeah. Fired him two days later, he came back and rammed his car into it and threatened to blow it up. I mean, in Green Bay. Wow. So it's wow. A weird situation. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, fortunate that I just, I have thick skin. I don't know if it was from growing up with two brothers that were beating on me oh. or making fun of me, whatever. But it's just, you just kind of have to shake some of that stuff off and just, I don't know. It, I'm just always focused on my job and what I need to do and, you know, what I need to get done. Anyway, I can help the team. That's what I'm going to do. But, um, yeah, I mean, there are – you see a lot of guys that kind of crumble when they reach the top of their game or start getting some publicity, and it's too bad because I'm sure they're rolling in the dough. And But, I mean, at the same time, that's maybe not them being happy either. So There's a lot of guys know. because of the money. I mean, you, you talk to some of the old school guys, and they'll tell you, man, if it wasn't for the money, I sure as hell wouldn't have played. I mean, no. Yeah. See that. I mean, obviously, you know as well as I do, you go to a certain practice and you see the guy that's barely there. I mean, look at your TOs. The guy had all the gifts in the world, but he couldn't shut up. Yeah. Um, there's a guy that obviously wasn't happy because it was me, me, me. If it wasn't me and trying to help the team, I'm out of here. I'm quitting. I mean, you mentioned the MJ series. You know, the Pistons walked off the floor, man, with 10 seconds left. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't remember that much as a kid, but once I hear that, I'm like, man, Isaiah Thomas is a punk, man. <laughs> like, yeah. In. My dad would have whooped me. Oh, <laughs> oh, for sure. He was oh. like, you were a douche. <laughs> so, <laughs> just amazing to see, like, when you look into some of this stuff of how crazy now that things really come out, and we're starting to hear stories about, you know, Favre and the Reggies of the world, and some of the bigger names, even the Nitschkes, the Don Shulas of the world. I mean, you look at a guy like Don Shula, obviously, who just um, yeah. left Earth here now, and you know, there's a legendary coach that you never heard of one single story. And in, in all my years that I've been alive, I've not heard one single bad thing I ever said about Don Shula. So you got to look at that and go, man, that guy did everything right. That's the guy I want to emulate. Then you look at other coaches and go, man, he was doing everything wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you look at like a guy like Belichick. I mean, there might be an asterisk next to his name the rest of his life because of some of the things that have gone on but at the same time i mean he's had success and yeah. he's doing yeah, what he's got to do to win so how are you success uh, yeah i had a strength coach tell me one time he's like if you ain't cheating you ain't trying and yeah. I, know, I guess some some guys might live by that a little too much all right uh, it's a motto too it's called green bay don't pay so <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and that's at all level um, all right yeah tyler we talked to um Faf the other day, who was your most hated rival or the worst team that you had to go against? Like, who was the one team you're like, man, these SOBs again? Who was that for you? Um, gosh, I don't know. I mean, Ohio State, I, I don't think we beat them when I was there. I mean, they were always really good. But we didn't – I don't know if I didn't play them one year. Iowa was always a good team. You know, you kind of look forward to that battle. Uh, me being from Minnesota, I was always looking forward to that, even though – they didn't really give us much of a game, but um, were you a Gopher fan? Not or really. Not? I didn't really. I didn't really grow up as a college fan until I started getting recruited. I yeah. paid more attention to the pros, um, 
and we had some good teams when I was growing up, you know, the 98 uh, Vikings and um, yeah. Austin Culpepper. And yeah, yeah, that, those years. Underrated back in NFL history, I think it's Robert Smith. That guy was just oh. – And he, he retired early too. He could have yeah, played exactly. a lot longer. Him and Tiki Barber did the same thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, like, I mean, the Timberwolves were good too. I always remember watching them a lot. But Darn go for – Go for sports. Uh, I mean, as a kid, I think I remember watching the women's basketball with like <laughs> Lindsey Whalen because that was one of the only teams that was decent. <laughs> Even I, though, I mean, we sorry. had Lawrence Maroney and uh, Barber oh, came out. Barber, yeah. I think in the early 2000s. Um, but, yeah, so then when I started getting recruited, I was like, dang, I better learn a little bit about college, <laughs> college sports. But only having the two big offers – made it easy to pick between the two schools so who was your just minnesota and uh wisconsin and then south dakota state offered me but obviously i was going to go big right. 10 if i could oh, yeah <laughs> yeah what, uh, what did the family have to say when you chose the rivals over the hometown team were they kind of upset were they still happy because you were happy or what was their thought on that too uh i mean they understood just because of the the football side of things um, I mean, I don't think I could have went wrong going to Minnesota as a school either, you know, education wise, but, um, and they, they wanted me to go to Minnesota just because it was a lot closer. Right. And at the time, at the time I had a brother in, uh, Bloomington going to chiropractic school there too. So that would have been nice. super handy to be around family and could have been awesome. But, um, I mean, I definitely made the right choice in going to Madison and, yeah. Uh, you know, it was just an all around great five years there. And I met a ton of people that I still keep in touch with. Um, and I have some more extended family that are, you know, closer to Madison that I kind of got to know more throughout the years too. So I'm kind of glad I did that. Nice. Who, was your, uh, who was your chum buddy when you were on the team? Like who was your always go to, if you, they were looking for you, they'd find him right with you. Who was that for you? Uh, me and Dan Volts, the center, we were, he came in, I think, a semester early, so I was only there, you know, my freshman fall, summer and fall, and then he came in that spring, and um, he had to live in the dorms one year, but then we were roommates the rest of my time there, and um, Austin Molly, he was a tight end from Wanakee. Him and I were good buds, too. We were freshman roommates in the dorms and lived together for another three, four years after that, so um, those two guys, I mean, we just – we had a good O line group in general. I mean, Kyle Costigan and Rob Havenstein. Um, Dallas Lewis. Back on the NFL right now, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right now. Uh, Talk about Dallas Lewis. Uh, definitely serious about his diet. We had Robbie out for, uh, well, I shouldn't call him Robbie because he'd probably punch me in the throat for that because he hates that. <laughs> uh, this one boy, we had him out for a signing, and that dude was like straight salad, counting every single part, like picking through. It's amazing because that dude dropped some weight, but. I was like, bro, yeah. steak, please, like, let me feed you. And he's, man, can you guys just get me a really nice salad? Hold this, hold that. I'm like, <laughs> are you? Yeah. Like, you know, we were expecting a $300 tab, and here's a guy with, like, a $10 salad. It was crazy. Yeah, when he came in to uh, Wisconsin, supposedly he was, like, close to 400 pounds, and they just had to, like, or he was maybe, like, 370, some crazy number, and he had to, like, just drop a bunch of weight before he could – really start developing as a player and i mean well, even, uh, respect to him for that he definitely dropped some more weight too i mean he, when i saw him i thought he was almost a tight end i was like where the heck's rob i mean other than his height i mean he really slimmed out so pretty crazy yeah. right i mean he got drafted early and he's still playing in the league and doing well and making good money so i mean he did everything right so it's, it's proof for sure and definitely is the the groomer for the o-line any surprises by you in this year's draft whether it be personally with the Panthers or with the Badgers. I mean, no Badgers old linemen taken until forever, it seemed like. Yeah. Um, you know, I was. I think when I was a senior, um, Zach was a freshman. And so I went against him a lot as a you know, scout player. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I just kind of sensed that he was going to be a freak. I mean, he was just a freak athlete. And to see him really kind of step into his own the last two years was cool and he was, he was a nice guy and, you know, that was fun to watch and I'm glad that he got drafted and hopefully he just keeps, keeps killing it. But, um, 
yeah, I mean, I don't know. We kind of had a there. I, there was no seniors that even really entered the draft, were there? Or Erdman, I guess. Yeah, uh, as an offensive yeah. lineman. Yeah, uh, did he sign with anybody? I don't know if he did or not. Yeah, and then no, we because uh, Tyler was a junior that left early, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Actually, no, no. Bond Bond was a senior, wasn't he? Yeah, no, Tyler. Uh, I don't even know how you say his last name. The center. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I guess. Or, yeah. Two, yeah, yeah. Hmm. But any surprise by Jonathan Taylor slipping so far in the draft? Or, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's not too surprising, just because I feel like running backs, you just don't see them go in the first. You know, they have such a short lifespan in the NFL. I don't know. It's I mean, for his sake, I was hoping he would have. Um, but just with the reality of the business, I guess it didn't surprise me too much. Well, good. You guys, you, you guys probably got the biggest surprise in the what the Packers are doing over there. That's just the talk of the <laughs> league. You guys, yeah. that when you guys see the virtual locker room, is just what the hell is going on? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I got the. There's the I biggest the part saying yes. he won't hire here and then yeah it's just creating controversy but like you said the league is slow and needs something to talk about um you know i know we just saw too the nfl release that they plan to open on time is that something that they've kind of been relaying to you guys or what's the latest that you've heard from the nfl as far as what to expect coming up i mean we honestly get told kind of what the fans here i mean we'll maybe get an email but then they release it on twitter or whatever it is so there's always I'm sure <laughs> what's that there's always a leak now it seems like there's no secrets no anything i mean everything's yeah. yeah yeah and i mean we just went through the whole cba thing with the oh. players union and and the owners and um you know we just had that battle well now i'm sure they're back talking again about how we're going to proceed with the season and what will happen there so i've right. heard possibility of pushback not- to sorry Oh, I said, yeah, anytime you hear you're pushing back a paycheck, yeah, you're definitely going to get it. And you guys have a, a former Packer running your CBA now, which is kind of nice, or the players group, so that's always nice. Yeah, and so we um, – I've heard talk about, you know, the season maybe getting pushed back to October and then, like, no buy and just going straight through. Well, you can't just throw us into the wolves. I mean, we're used to having, uh, what is it, six-week training camp, which – if that's shortened, I mean, players might enjoy that, but um, it's definitely going to be tough on your body if you're going – and I don't know, they might shorten the season up too, but if it's yeah. a 16-game season and you just go straight through, that'll be tough. Yeah, I mean, a guy on the edge, does that give you an advantage or disadvantage if the season's, you know, either push back or whatever? I mean, obviously you're kind of on the edge, like you said. I mean, we've been kind of – Seeing you go through your progression, I mean, does that benefit you having all that extra time or are you just – maybe it's a quicker flash that you get in the pan there? I, I don't know, man. It's – I mean, I guess the benefit I'll have is I've been in the league, so, you know, rookies coming in or younger guys coming in, it's like – and, too, I mean, we're, we're away from the facility, so there's not someone telling us what to do. You know, you got to be motivated and stay on top of your stuff and, and take care of business yourself. So, you know, and I've, I've got that motivation going for me and – um, you know, I feel like I'm a smart guy, so I'm picking up the playbook as, as quick as possible. So we'll see what happens. Major changes for you, or is it pretty, you know, as a lineman, do, I guess for the average person, they don't understand lineman technology. They think you just go out there, you either have pass block or you have run block. That's it. How, how complicated does this year's scheme seem to be for you so far? I know you say you're kind of catching in on, is it, pretty complex to last year, pretty similar. Like how has it changed for you on the offensive line side? Uh, I mean, to be honest, every team runs the exact same plays. It's just some run different plays more often, I guess. Um, and a lot of the verbiage or the, you know, the wording is similar around the league. So it's easy to pick up on. Um, but yeah, you just kind of have to, the biggest thing is knowing what techniques the coaches want and, and how they want to get the blocks done you know, to be successful and you're trying to kind of do what he asks. So um, the the good thing about the league, the NFL is sometimes coaches are like, well, if you can get it done your way, you know, feel free to do that. And so 
Um, it just kind of depends who you're who you're playing for. Sure. Is there a scheme you kind of like better, like a zone or man blocking? Um, I mean, just from playing at Wisconsin, we ran a lot of power, a lot of gap gap scheme, um, an inside zone. But this last um, coaching staff at Tennessee, which I mean, it's kind of the same coaching tree that the Packers have with LaFleur now because he was there uh, the first year is all outside zone based. So I kind of got used to running that too. So, um, man, I mean, I just like running the ball. I mean, the more you can run it, the better. <laughs> Every line. Yes. Is it, yeah. is it, uh, does it hurt a little bit in winter? <laughs> uh, I mean, that, that good game we played in Minnesota, I think it was my sophomore year. It was like negative 15 or something. It was like the coldest game played there, man. That was, that was brutal. Your fingers were hurting every time you punch or go to block okay. someone. But yeah. that's, that's what I was thinking about is if they push the season back, I was like, now you're playing games in October, November, where in the Midwest, that's when it's starting to get cold. Uh, yeah. And, you know, if you, if you play into later February, it's like, now it's, it's going to be bru brutal. Is. Oh. Yeah. January, we came and host a Super Bowl, but you'll let guys play a regular season game. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tyler, who was your biggest prankster on the team, both with the uh, um, Badgers and then obviously once you got to the NFL, like who's your – what's your most memorable prank or rookie hazing that you had to deal with so far when you were um, there? Man, I don't know. We had uh, – like Ryan Groy, he was always kind of joking around. Um, I don't know. There wasn't anything too too serious. But, I mean, back when I played, it was a little more loose on the um, – rookie hazings thing so some guys would get taped up or <laughs> whatever it might be you know a tape to the goal post or whatever I mean I think we used to have freshman Olympics where we had to run from like the student section of Camp Randall okay. we'd race from the from the bottom to the top before practice oh so yeah that's brutal and then oh. we'd have to go and start practice oh geez and if it was raining we'd have to uh barrel roll the width of the field Oh. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you get dizzy at all, but I yeah. definitely do. And then we'd have to like backpedal backwards. It was it was awful. Oh. But uh, in the league, um, we had a guy Ben Jones with the Titans. He would throw a birthday cake in your face if it was your birthday, and we were in the facility. Um. So, or it, it wasn't always a cake. It would be like um, like whipped cream or how like baby powder or whatever whatever you could find that's just messy kind sometimes like the, it would well if you would like get a walk off or something they throw a pie in your face or something like that yeah exactly and he would try and just like hit you as hard as he could which <laughs> i mean it's all in, it's all in good fun but um i would just keep my head on a swivel when it was my birthday and luckily i never he never got me nice. <laughs> um yeah what was your most memorable game here in wisconsin like what's one big game you always have that takeaway of going back to? Yeah, I always, I always kind of go back to my junior year when we played. Um, I don't remember exactly the order, but it was like Wisconsin or uh, Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska back to back to back. And we had to win those three in order to make it to the, the Big Ten championship and to win our side of the division. Um, and obviously that Nebraska game was the game where Melvin went off for – over 400 yards and That's three like quarters. So something. Yeah. I mean, it was, oh, it was nasty. I wasn't even the, playing in the fourth quarter, which was great. <laughs> Anna Martina, that Martinez kid, that quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, it was like snowing that day and there was like no wind. So the snow was just falling. I don't know. It was just your typical, like Midwest day, you know, Midwest <laughs> football game. And guys were making snow angels after the game. It was awesome. <laughs> And that was when we had incorporated the uh, the trophy. I don't know if that was a thing the first few years we played them, but we we're playing for the memorial trophy, or um, I don't even think that's what it's called. But I can't think of that one. That's it's because our our stadium is uh, Camp Randall, the old um, like war grounds, and theirs is called Memorial Stadium. So it's like half of the trophy is our stadium, and half the trophy is their stadium. It's kind of like a a war memorial kind of trophy. It's it's actually super cool. We call the War Games trophy. <laughs> I think it's is it the, maybe the Freedom the Freedom Trophy maybe. Uh, that might be. I, 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 I should probably know this, but 
So that sounds it, familiar. It, it's it's been so long ago. I don't honestly. I forget a lot of that stuff. So going college or pro, which one were you more no, nervous for? Do you think? Um, I think the jump between high school and college was bigger. Um, you know, the speed definitely increases from college to the NFL, but you you do know what you're getting into because you've played against some of the best of the best, and you know they're going into the league as well, but you know, that first freshman year, and I was actually coming off of uh, ACL injury in high school, my senior year of football. And so to kind of come back from that, you know, it was a long freshman year. Plus you got all the freshman stuff that goes along with it. And, um, but yeah, I mean, you learn to pick it up and you kind of get in your groove and, and things keep rolling. And um, I don't know, at, at that level too, you're around the same people for five years where like the NFL you know, you might have a teammate for one year and a coaching staff for one year and they're gone. Well, actually with the Badgers, we had quite a few different coaches. My five years I was there, which is surprising, but um, at least like the teammates around you were consistent. So it was kind of nice to just lean on each other. Well, and you guys have a pretty well-known Badger from this year's team coming in and Chris Orr. Has he reached out to you at all as far as what to expect down there in Carolina yet or? No, he hasn't. And uh, actually, when I was there this last year, I saw Natrell's down there, too. He was on IR, I, I believe. But it's always nice just to see, you know, familiar faces. When I was out with the Chargers, uh, obviously, Derek and Melvin were there. And so Derek and I, we we would sit by each other on the plane and, you know, kind of catch up. And um, so, yeah, any, with, when I was with the Titans, I don't think we ever had any um, – Wisconsin Badgers come down I know we had I had a go for a go for offensive lineman and uh, Jonah Prisig was down there for camp and so him and I kind of w- would chat it up and but yeah anytime you can be around Midwest people it's always a good thing have you ever done any hunting or fishing with the Watt boys out here in Wisconsin yet or is that on the list of things to do yet I, I are they big hunters I don't I don't know I have a little hunting cabin but i think jj turned that into a, a sports complex for himself he always has the old line they show on there together so yeah i don't i don't know I'm, I'm sure they'd go fishing but i never really got to do any of that when i was in wisconsin okay there's times where groy he would go hunting i think before practice on or like in the morning in the mornings he'd wake up at six before class just to go hunting i was like oh you're man nuts. that's dedicated yeah <laughs> And where he knew the spots too. Oh, nice. There's a lot of open space, I guess. Yeah, once you get outside the city limit. I mean, there's enough small town out there. So I only had a moped, so it's not like I'm gonna throw a gun or a bow on my back and (laughs) takes takes me a half hour to get out there. You gotta call coach. I need an excuse from practice and I need your pickup truck when we're done. I'll run hills later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So who is the nastiest guy you ever played against so far in your career, Tyler? Like, who's the one guy that you're just like, dude, that is one dirty dude, and you just know it's coming? Like, who is that guy for you? Man, we didn't – I didn't really have too many of them. Um, there would be, like, a linebacker, I guess, that the coaches would kind of, you know, make a note of where, like, hey, this guy is known for trying to grab stuff when you're on the bottom of the pile or – you know, yeah. whatever it is, but I think being an offensive lineman, it's not like you're getting tackled. So, sure. Um, I just, ne- I never really experienced too much of that. Okay. Um, so your, your first start was with the Texans. Uh, did you have to line up against JJ at all? Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely uh, <laughs> an interesting first career start, but it was, it was a good challenge and it was cool yeah. that we won the game and just an overall good team victory. So, good oh, talk to us now. At the end, dude. Uh, not really. I, n- I never crossed paths with him at, at college, so I don't even know if he would know who I am. Yeah. So walk me through what was the – what prompted the change from me go the defensive to the offensive side of ball? Like what happened there? I, I never played defense in college, but okay. in high school in high school I did. I, I played both I, – I, po- I played both ways just because I'm from such a small school. Sure. I mean – I don't know when you play offensive line, there's no stats or there's nothing fancy about it. So I was just glad I got to, I got to get a couple sacks and <laughs> tackles, you know, if I played D tackle, that was, that was a lot more fun. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It's like, 
I mean, I was a tight end, I think my freshman year. So I had, you know, those highlights and then it's like, all right, we're going to move you to offensive line. And now it's like, Oh, great. (laughs) So then you kind of switch your focus to just the D line and trying to get a little glory, but um, obviously, you know, I knew that playing offensive line was the better option for later on. What else you got there, Jeff? I know you're itching to ask something usually. <laughs> Me? Yeah. I don't know. What uh I mean being your your I mean being in NFL, you said you you had never really attended a NFL game. Did was your first game actually being in the NFL? I think I had gone to one game at the Metrodome. Okay. Um when I was a kid. But we also got to play in the Metrodome for uh, state football which is pretty cool so I had been in in the stadium and I well, I mean when I was getting recruited I'd been in um, I've gone to Camp Randall and I'd been to I think I went to an Iowa game and a Minnesota game so I'd been in big stadiums and a lot of college stadiums are bigger than the NFL um, stadiums and unfortunately when I got to Tennessee the fan base there wasn't that great because I think they'd won five games in two years, the previous two years. So it was like, I don't know. I mean, not disappointing, but it's like, man, I had, I just come from Wisconsin where it was sold out every game and there's 90,000 people in the stands and, you know, tailgating is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, there's definitely no other experience like uh, college football. I mean, and that was a cool part about going to Iowa as a recruit they, the way they tailgate is so different. I mean, it's more like parking lots and campers. That stadium, and That stadium's pretty unique. I mean, yeah. at, at ground level and then it goes down. I had a, my daughter's uh, godfather went to Iowa and we got to experience that. It was pretty neat to see. Yeah. We're like Madison is more of a, there's like house, you know, it's houses or it's just packed around the, the stadium. So it's yeah. a bunch of cars parked in yards and, you know, grills going or whatever so it, it was cool to experience that yep Tyler, we, uh, if you had to give some advice to someone looking to maybe decide between madison or another school one of those guys i've heard is still donald driver's son um christian's still looking in wisconsin with his top rank what's your recruiting pitch for the university of wisconsin tyler if you had to give one yeah give him <laughs> <laughs> i mean when I, when I was getting recruited by bielma he would always um just tell me you know like you got to, you're going to get a good, get good education. It's good football. And, you know, like the environment, the community, the people out here are great. He's like, those are the three things that you really need. And, you know, Madison offers that. I mean, the summers were some of the best memories there because every other student was gone. So Madison wasn't like packed, like it was during the school year. And you could go to, (laughs) what's what's that? Got a Mifflin. (laughs) Yeah, man, it, but like you could go to the lakes and just kind of kick back and enjoy yourself after workouts and, you know, just experience things during the summer that you couldn't during the school year. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, it's a great place to be. I would recommend it for anyone, especially if you're a wider, is he, does he play wide receiver? I think he's safety wide receiver. I believe. That's the ball. Yeah. He's pretty recruited at both. I think he's like 30 country or something ranked or something it's if you're good. if you're a stud receiver i don't know why you wouldn't want to come to wisconsin because it's not i mean uh we've had a few good ones the past few years but Ephus, man you know, that kid i hate seeing him in detroit but <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, but i mean he's a good pro i think i really do he's, yeah. slow, but he's big and he catches everything yeah exactly so i mean shoot if i was a receiver i'd go there because you might have a really good chance at being the number one guy and getting thrown a lot of balls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got my dog trying to chime in. Apparently it's past his bedtime already. <laughs> 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 and you're looking forward to Tyler while you're in Carolina this year. I mean, it, it just seems like it's been forever since we played ball. I'm just looking forward to getting back to that. And it's kind of a newer town for me. So just, you know, getting rid of the, the anxiety of moving to a new town and just settling in will, will be nice. Um, you have your place then, already or is that still on the to-do list? Uh, it's 
I mean, I don't really want to get anything until I know, you know, and like you said, when you're an on ed, on the edge guy, I mean, sure. it doesn't pay to really plant your roots anywhere. It's, right. I just pack a suitcase and load the truck up and go. So, nice. um, which isn't a bad yeah. thing. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed it. You stay at like a hotel or something then or? Yeah. Hotel extended stay or, um, yeah. Airbnb or nice. and in Tennessee, when I was there for the three, four years, I finally rented a, an apartment, but you have to, uh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's just it's t- too bad that you're throwing away money and rent when you could maybe be investing in a house. I mean, right. you guys, you guys were talking about that earlier. Maybe, maybe a little jealous. <laughs> Not to see kids, man. You have nothing to be jealous about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, and then some. So yeah, you you won't be saying that then. You're like, where did that go? Oh, who threw that shoe window? Like, that's yeah, there too. So. Yeah, it, it's sometimes good. Like I said, this will be my first experience with home ownership. But uh, looking at how much money I've just, like you said, kind of pissed away in the wind for rent for how many years, it's just like, man, I probably could have paid off half a house by now. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah, it's worth it. Live and learn once you get there. Now you will have to mow your own lawn, though. I don't know if you had to do that before, but <laughs> I'm, you can't just call the. <laughs> I, w- I wish I still coach high school ball. I'd make the kids come over and do it. I've done it twice already this year. She likes it. She's 12, and for some reason, when the day I let her use that lawnmower, man, all of a sudden she loved me that day. Holy cow. Um, <laughs> Harold at the time was younger, of course, pushing his little fake um, little tykes one, and he loved that and got to do that. He's mad at me. I just sold it the other day. I'm like, dude, you're six. So you don't need a fake push mower yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah. Son, a couple more years, that. you can use the real one. Does it? But, well, cool. Well, Tyler, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. I know you're still uh, – got a million one things that you got to do and obviously you got your your playbook to get into and everything so we're gonna let you be but we want to wish you the best of luck with everything coming up hopefully you'll stay in contact uh i'll look out for my uh message for me on where to go i'm in nashville and if we get down to carolina we hope to catch up with you while we're there for sure man thank you guys for having me on it was a, oh, it was right. a good catching you up badgers <laughs> what's that i didn't always stand for you badgers that's for sure oh for sure we'll have to get to a to a badger game sometime maybe after i'm done playing ball hey hi right. man let us know do a little tailgating i got well, a sister that uh, lives on there <laughs> there we go here's see if the main game will even happen this year i mean you got to feel bad for those guys too that you don't even get spring ball right now i mean you're going right into season and that's it so it's gotta be different i know there's a i was talking about earlier there's a kid from my hometown that plays baseball at uh augustana and this would have been his senior year, and luckily they've granted them the opportunity to come back, which he's going to do. So, nice. yeah, that's nice. You know, I think if something like that were to happen, I, I mean, that's probably what they would do. Right. So, but yeah, still, it's. I mean, when you kind of got your schedule going and you're planning for your future, you don't really want something like this that's out of your control to just throw a wrench in it. But it is what it is. Yeah. Stop aging. That's one thing I figured out in life. So, guys, yeah. I still can because every year, every every couple months, like you said, especially if you let yourself go, there's going to be guys that come into camp overweight or out of shape that didn't do a darn thing but sit on the couch and hope they collect some endorsement checks. So it'll be interesting to see who is with it and who's not. So it's called exactly. dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, right? <laughs> Racing it too well. So yeah, thanks for rubbing. <laughs> Yeah, so well perfect tyler thanks again and uh we'll chat with you soon man i appreciate it and jeff oh, thank you for being with us yep thank you <laughs>